the Joe Rogan experience. His bro- Richie's brother was a, a mixed martial arts commentator. He was a sports guy. He did uh, World Combat Championships, I think it was called. It was like uh, he was like one of the, the – he was the play-by-play guy or the color – yeah, he was the play-by-play guy. And it was like the early days of fighting when the UFC had just started – and Henzo Gracie fought Oleg Taktarov, and Richie's brother was uh, the the play by play commentator. Really? Yeah, like he did the John Anik, Mike Goldberg role. Yeah, I remember thinking this is so crazy because I um, I don't think at the time I had even done any work for the UFC. I think at the time I was just a fan, and I was just. What year did you start with them? Ninety seven. Oh, okay. Well, that's Twenty years. Twenty three years. Three years. Jesus. Isn't that nuts? I started at UFC twelve. In Dothan, Alabama. How was your first broadcast? Um, I, <laughs> they didn't give me any instruction. Nobody told me what to do. Nobody told me how to do it. Nobody told me shit. They just said, do you want a gig interviewing the fighters after the fights? I was like, sure. You know, like, and then it was so rinky dink. Like yeah. we were in this weird little fucking hotel um, and this weird, and you know, that's where we were staying. We flew in there on a propeller plane. The gig was supposed to be in Buffalo, New York, but New York State banned it at the last right. minute. So Bob Meyerowitz, who was the owner of the company, and uh, Campbell McLaren, who was the guy who hired me, they told me, you're going down to Alabama instead. Like, what? So I, I flew in to one part of Alabama and then took a puddle jumper <laughs> and landed in Dothan. And that was like the place where they were allowed to to do the show there. And it was this little auditorium. It wasn't very big at all. And uh, the first show I ever worked at, Mark the Hammer Coleman beat Dan Severn for the UFC heavyweight title, UFC 12. Vitor Belfort made his debut. And I was wow. actually training at Vitor's school. I was a white belt. Uh, Carlson Gracie's in 97. And uh, that's where, uh, v- and I had been there since 96. I, I started training there in 96. And then in 97, Vitor was uh, making his UFC debut. And just by sheer luck, I happened to be at the actual gym with Carlos Bajetto and Mario Sperry and all these like just assassins back then. And um, I got to be the post-fight interview guy. Yeah. It was nuts, man. That's me. Look at yeah. That. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I saw, I Look at my this. earring. Ooh, so cute. Little cutie pie. Yeah, so that was uh, way, way back in the Dizay, man. 1997. Rodrigo Madero's. There's when, Vitor. When you think of 97, you're like, fuck, I was doing comedy seven years by that point. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a long time ago, and I was already in the business. Yeah, I was nine years in at that point in comedy, because I started in 88, yeah. And uh, I didn't book gigs along. I actually had to quit, because it was costing me money. Because, like, if I would go to do a UFC, I, I don't remember how much I made. It wasn't that much to do uh, the interview stuff. But then if I could do a comedy gig, I could make like two grand for a weekend. Right. So I was like, why am I doing that when I can make two grand? Like, what am I doing? I'm making like one instead of two. So it was just costing me money. Plus anything that, kind of, anything that kind of way of comedy was yeah. difficult too. It was, but for me, my life started with martial arts. I mean, that was also, you know, I started in 88 and the last time I fought was 89. So that was probably, you know, Somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, eight years since my like serious competition day. So I still loved it. I was still into it. And I was loving that this new thing was around. So I was happy to be there. Even though it wasn't like, it wasn't affecting my career in a good way. In fact, the people that were, I was on news radio at the time. And the people that were the producers were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Like, why would, why would, they, they treated me like I was going off to do like porn. Right. What is this fucking violent thing you're yeah. talking about and being a part of and putting your face on? But yeah, and I was like an expert. Like I was the the expert interviewer asking people questions and doing things like, you're attaching yourself to cage fighting? <laughs> the fuck is wrong yeah. with you? But I loved it, man. I loved it. I was so excited to see this happen because we had always wondered. When, when I started doing martial arts, you know, I started in karate. Well, I did like a little bit of kung fu, then I did karate. The Kung Fu was like one lesson and then a little bit of karate, but then I got balls deep into Taekwondo But we always every, everybody always wanted to know what was the best martial art and I switched from Taekwondo And I started doing kickboxing and boxing because I realized like my hands were terrible And then I'm like man, man I thought it was good because I was good at Taekwondo But this boxing stuff is more important to learn. I need to learn that and then I started doing jujitsu and getting strangled I'm like fuck. I don't know anything 
And I remember thinking when the UFC came along, finally, we're going to figure out what works. 